My name is Monica Janae. Namaste and welcome back to my YouTube page. Happy Sunday everyone. I am recording this a little bit later than I normally do because I just got back from a few days away in Arizona. I went to the Grand Canyon with my partner. We had an amazing time and I really just needed some time just to kind of get away from everything. So I'm just really getting back into my space, getting settled in. Gizmo and I have been apart for a few days, so she's like super hyper right now. So if you see her, she's just hyper. <laughs> um, but I hope that you are all doing well. I hope that you're all taking care of yourselves and had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I was trying to think actually on the plane when I was coming back about what I wanted to talk about. And I have an idea of something that I would want to communicate uh, that I haven't really spoke about before. So I wanted to do a little bit of a story time and talk about a time a few years ago when I was actually recruited to be in a cult. <laughs> I have my green juice right here uh, just to kind of, you know, prepare myself for this discussion. But it's something that now I can actually talk about and it just sounds so crazy to me that this is this actually happened, but it's a true story. I'll probably write about it one day. <laughs> but let me tell you all what happened. So back in 2017, when I left my previous relationship that I was in, I was pretty much just open and seeking answers and kind of a new way of life. As I mentioned in my Why I'm Spiritual Not Religious video, I uh, basically had always really been raised in the Christian church. And at that time, I really had leaned on my faith, I felt like, to get me out of that situation. So when I started to reconnect with old friends and things like that, one thing that I noticed that happened is I got uh, connected to some of my friends who were also Christian. One of my friends in particular from college, she reached out to me and, you know, basically just said how good it was to hear from me and to see me. And she asked me, you know, if I was a Christian and I was like, yes, yes, I am. She said that she had been invited to a Bible study that she kind of just wanted to dive deeper into her faith and asked me if I wanted to join. And yeah, like I said at the time, I was very open. I'm like, yeah, sure. And this was somebody who I was very close to in college. We were in the dorms together, you know? So I was like, yeah, that's fine. So she and I connected and we met with a girl who led our Bible study. We met at like a local coffee shop. And basically we just kind of took some time getting to know each other. I really liked this girl that I met. I was like, oh my gosh, she seems, she seems great. She was really very, very sweet. Uh, very genuine and you know she was like well if you're open to it we do bible study maybe once a week um you know if that's something that you can fit into your schedule at the time my weekends were pretty open so i said yes and we started doing bible studies pretty much every sunday we would meet at like a coffee shop or you know like a restaurant or something like that and just basically have our bibles and kind of go through stuff together and i liked it because what we were focusing on were things that I didn't really get to focus on in Bible studies previously. So we were talking about things that were a little bit more in depth, um, the symbolism and the Bible and, you know, the, the meaning behind the stories, understanding what religion actually is, you know, and I felt like I was learning a lot. I was taking notes and I felt really like grateful to be learning all this information and stuff that I didn't previously know. So I think we're, I noticed the start to turn was that we started to increase the time that we were meeting each week. So we went from meeting one day a week to meeting like twice a week. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But the time that they wanted to meet wasn't, was usually the time that I would eat dinner. And I was like, well, can we grab food? And they're like, yeah. So we would just have our Bibles and be eating and talking about the Bible over dinner. I remember one time in particular, we were at a restaurant and there was like a family sitting next to us and they were like, are they studying the Bible? <laughs> and I think it was like, it was more of a judgment than a curiosity. And I just remember that kind of sticking out to me like, oh, is it weird that we're sitting in a restaurant doing Bible study? <laughs> but, you know, I just kind of brushed it off because I really liked spending time with the ladies and, you know, we, we had a good time. So we did this for a few months and I was really happy with it. I was like, oh, this is great. And then I want to say maybe like, maybe 
five months in, or maybe even less, maybe like four months in, I was invited to join a larger class. The woman who was leading our you know, three-person Bible study was saying that basically the point that we had left off on with Bible study, there was a class that we were, that I would be able to take that's free that would allow me to kind of dive deeper and learn with other people who were also doing Bible study, which I thought was cool. Um, now, <laughs> now that I tell the story, there were so many moments where I wish I would have asked like more questions. For instance, she didn't want to tell me the exact address of the building. She was like, oh, well, we'll meet at a, we picked like a spot to meet. And she's like, and we can just all drive over together. And I was like, okay, well maybe it's just because I'm new or something. Maybe she wants to introduce me or whatever. But you know, I, I felt like I had a good connection with both of the ladies. So I was like, okay, well, let me just try. So we go to this class and everyone there was super nice, super friendly. I could tell that they all were like really excited and oh my gosh, you know, welcome to the class and everything. And I was like, okay, like this is cool. It was late at night. Um, so I was kind of tired because I'm really not a night person, but they're like, oh, we have coffee and, and tea and all these different things. So I was like, all right, I just got myself some tea and, you know, sat down and the course, like the class was longer than our Bible studies were. If we started at seven, at the first time we met, we probably went to like eight. And then the time after that and times after it went from like seven to like nine o'clock. And I go to, I would go to sleep by 10. And the place where we had Bible study at was not that close to where I live. So it was literally like, I would go to Bible study, come home, shower or whatever, and go to sleep. <laughs> like that was pretty much how it was. And we started out, same thing, just once a week. And the class was really, really large. And then I started to notice that the class was getting smaller and the time that we were expected to meet was getting longer and more intense. So my feelers are going off, but as I said at the time, I really was just like seeking. I'm like, maybe this is what I need. Maybe this will be good for me. You know, I was learning a lot. Everybody was so nice and friendly. They would like check on me throughout the week, you know? So I didn't really think too much of it. But then here's like where I was like, okay, uh, this doesn't sound right. So the Bible study was changing and we started talking about like recruiting and basically saying like, okay, so when you are, we, you know, we expect you all, if you're going to be a part of this church to recruit people for Bible study, they said that they literally would go into other organized church facilities and act like they were a member and take and request Bible study with one of the members to get them to transfer to the church. To me, I was like, that's lying. And they're like, well, you know, it's for the good of the people. And, you know, we really feel like we can be more helpful because look at how much you've learned. So that was strike one. Strike two was that they kept mentioning this idea of it being a cult. And I'm like, why do they keep saying this? There was one speaker in particular who was like, you know, people think that I'm crazy because I, you know, I'm just such a Christian, but if they think it's a cult, then who cares? Like, and I'm like, where's this cult idea coming from? Uh, I don't want to be associated with that. So that was strike two. And then there was a lot of other like little weird things, but then here was like the big kicker. I found out that somebody who I connected to in the class, who I thought we connected organically, was actually placed in that class to meet me as if she was a member of the church. The church is called Shen Chunji, which they didn't want to tell me for the longest time. I thought it was just a regular Bible study. They didn't want to tell me the name of the church. Once I actually looked it up, I realized it was a cult. The leader thought that he was like a prophet and all of these things. And once I found all that out, I left. But basically, they had basically planted not only just this girl in the class to connect with me, but other members of the church in the class to act like new students to try and convince people like myself to join the church. The idea of joining the church was like, we need your families, first and last names. We need your home address. 
we need your job address, we need this and that. I never gave them any of that information. They wanted you to sign some like book of life that was supposed to, <laughs> you know, this is the sacred way for you to connect. Or, it, it was honestly so planned out and so strategic using somebody who I already knew to get me to come into Bible study, to connect with people, then connect me to a girl who they thought that I would get along with. They invited me, me to all these events and things. So I was pissed when I found out I totally cut off my friend from college. I cut off the girl who led my Bible study. I told the girl who I connected with in class that like, I'm not doing it anymore. And they begged me, they begged me to stay. They were like, we, where can we meet up? Let's talk about it. Don't be rash. Don't make rash decisions. All of these things. And I'm like, no, this is a cult. You guys literally do this seven days a week, seven days a week. They're doing something related to the church. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> I have a life and I was just doing this for Bible study but it was taking a whole left turn. There was people who I was in the group with who were also new students who I'm pretty sure joined the church. And you know, I've never spoke to any of them again. I blocked all of them. I was like, you, I don't want anything to do with this. But yeah, I mean, even just thinking about it, it was literally months and months of preparation, of getting to know you, of inviting me to these events, of, you know, bonding and connecting, forming friendships for them to drop this bomb on me of like, okay, and you know, people may think that this is intense, but just accept it because that's part of, you know, being a believer. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think it should cost all, <laughs> all of this that's happening. So yeah, I was almost in a cult and literally had to like make sure, like cut the ties with all of these people to get myself out of it. How crazy is that? Take a little break from all of the chaos that's going on and tell you guys something interesting that happened to me.